Hey everyone, um, I had a couple of questions from some of you about how I sharpen my uh, charcoals and pencils and a little bit about how I hold the pencils when I'm sketching, so I thought I'd make this extra little video. So what we have here are, I have the Wolf's Carbon and the General's Charcoal Pencil, and I also have a regular vine, which is kind of round, and the Nitrum Vine. And then I also have a little X-Acto blade um, I usually use the single edge blades that look like this, and um, this is what I use to sharpen my pencil. You can also use a X-Acto blade that sits in the handle, but I find that I get a little less control with that. And um, I don't have any tape on this, but a little tip that I like to do is I like to tape off this section here because the sides here are kind of pointy. Um, and that's just to help it make it a little bit more comfortable when you're sharpening. So um, I do have a pencil sharpener, electric pencil sharpener. I can give you guys the name of it that actually sharpens charcoal pencils very, very well. Um, surprisingly, there aren't too many that will. Most of the time it just breaks off inside. So um, the traditional way to sharpen your charcoal is with a blade. So one of the things you wanna make sure you don't do um, is gouge into the, the wood too, at too sharp of an angle, um, kind of like what happened here. If you can avoid it, because what happens is you'll go through and sometimes you'll push through with so much force that you actually break your charcoal inside. So rather what you'd like to do is go in at a very shallow angle and you're just gonna be taking off thin amounts and then really when you get close to the end of your, where you're touching the bit of charcoal that's exposed, careful about gouging into it. You wanna kinda of make your angle scoop a little bit um, and not put too much pressure on the end of that. Um, on that note, what you also wanna do is make sure not to um, push down too much towards the end and, and try and dig deep. It's better just to take off little bits at a time. And just to get more control, what I like to do is hold it with my left hand and push with my thumb and I'm kind of pulling the pencil back. Just taking a little bit off at a time and then make sure you're taking off equal amounts all the way around. So you don't want to take it all the way down to the lid on one side and then have all the wood on the other side. Um, just kind of take it down evenly, rotating it around. And um, this takes a bit of practice and patience. And you want a nice slow kind of taper so that it doesn't suddenly end. Um, it'll give you a little more lead exposed that you can work with too, a little bit more of the charcoal. So I'm trying to just, I'm rotating the pencil as I go around. And how much lead you expose, that's entirely up to you. Um, I usually like around an inch or half inch. Um, and just be very careful as you start peeling off that little bit towards the end. So I'm going real shallow here. And you'll kind of feel it pop off, release from the, the lead a little bit once you get down to it. And just, of course, never put your finger in front of the blade. Be very careful. If some of your wood is kind of being stubborn, you can kind of go from this end and kind of scrape a little bit, but you want to be careful because you can break your lead. And sometimes I'll just scrape off a little bit of the glue I like that. I'm going to take off just a little more on this one here. If you are um, having trouble and you feel like you're having to use too much force to remove some of the, the wood, grab a brand new blade. It's probably that your blade is a little bit dull. All right, so now I have a good amount of that lead exposed. Um, so now I'm going to sharpen it on the sandpaper. So this is just a regular piece of kind of medium fine grit sandpaper 
and you can use a sanding block. Um, they even make them for, in the art store, but I like a big piece of sandpaper. It's just easier. And um, when I'm holding the charcoal up against the paper on the table, I'm trying to hold it as um, flush. Let me see if I can get that angle as flush to the paper as possible. You don't want to sharpen at a real steep angle because it'll give you a really short point. Our goal is to have a nice elongated point, so I'm going to be keeping my pencil pretty flush with that sandpaper as I sand it down, and I'm rotating the pencil as I move, and um, that way to get it even. And you kind of want to brace the back of the pencil, but be careful not to use too much uh, pressure. Uh, you can break the lead very easily. So you, you shouldn't need to push real hard. So you can see I'm starting to get a nice kind of tapered edge there. And so I'm going to rotate it to the opposite side. And I'm going to taper that edge. Okay, so now I'm starting to get kind of a, let's see if you can see that, a V point. And now I'm going to taper the sides. So I kind of do it in like a square pattern. I do one side and the opposite side, and then I do, like if I did the top and bottom, then I would do the two sides, and then pretty soon you'll start to see it rounding out. And then you can just kind of gently rotate the pencil as you move it back and forth to kind of finish off that edge. And I'm barely using any pressure I'm holding it really flat against the paper. Um, kind of like, let me see if I can get that angle. So kind of like that. Okay, so a little tilted, but not by very much. Okay, so by the time I get my charcoal pencil all ground down, I should have a nice fine point that will last me quite a while. Um, and you don't always need to peel this back. Sometimes it's just a matter of going it through and resharpening the end. And um, when you store your pencils, some of you had a question about that. You know, if you set it on the table, if your table's not perfectly flat, I've had my pencils roll off and break off the nice ending I got on it. So I just use a ceramic heavy cup on the bottom. Um, so you can even just use like a plastic cup with some marbles at the bottom, just something that keeps the cup from tipping over. And I just set my charcoal in it, and that's how I, I store my charcoal pencils with the point up. Okay, and so to talk a little bit about how you will also sharpen the vine, this is the rounded vine, and this is the nitrum vine, which is a little bit more square. Um, it's the same process that I showed you with this, but we're not going to use the blade. But we're going to still hold the charcoal very flush to the paper so that when we're grinding it, This is a little softer so I can do this a little bit more upright. But I usually do it flat on the table. I just want to show you. So I do opposite sides until I start to get a wedge. Flip over again. Holding it pretty flush to that paper. You can start to see I'm starting to get a nice wedge on there. And so now I'm going to sharp, uh, sharpen these sides, taper those. You could draw with it like this, but um, usually when you're sketching, you want as fine of a point as possible. Okay, now the opposite side. And then and you can kind of start to rotate it and round out those squared edges. And there you go, you have a nice fine point to draw with. If you get it too thin, oftentimes they'll, they'll kind of break, um, but you can see that gives me a nice thin line. Um, that's great for sketching. And then of course you would do the same thing with the, the um, nitrum charcoal, but it, it's, it's square so you don't really tend to round out the end, you just kind of taper it all to a real nice fine point. Um, and then there was another question about how to hold, best hold your charcoal when you're first drawing. So um, when you're drawing 
you know, traditionally we think of holding a pencil like this, you know, we write like this. But the problem is when you hold your pencil like that and you kind of choke up on the front of it, we tend to get really detailed and we tend to draw pretty heavy. So what I recommend is actually holding the pencil like someone just handed it to you. Okay, so my hands just like this, someone just handed it to me. And, and then I use my pinky like this, I kind of make a fist, and I rest my pinky on the paper. So it's kind of like supporting my hand and allowing my hand to float above the paper. What this does is it gives me a good amount of control over the weight of my line or how heavy my line is going down. So I'll use my knuckles, kind of resting against the paper, tilt my wrist towards the paper, and just get a nice loose line. Um, that being said, you want to use your whole arm when you're doing your gesture. Um, do not draw with just your wrist or with your, your fingers, okay? Um, you want to use your whole arm and just practice. You know, one thing, if you're not used to holding your pencil this way, just practice a couple of figure eights and see if you can hit that line more than once. And also try and draw like a, a point, two points, and then try and draw a nice straight line between those two points. It's just a practice and also to see if you can control the weight of your line. If I'm trying to float my hand above and draw a you know, straight line, see how much heavier my line goes down? Um, or even if I held it like this and I was trying to float it and I'm not resting my hand against the paper, you know, I can be a little bit lighter, but it's harder than really just using the pencil and just letting it barely touch the paper and I'm keeping that control because of the way my hand is rested on the paper. So, um, same thing goes for the pencils. I tend to hold them like this, and I do tend to hold them like this too when I'm starting to shade, um, but I will not hold them like before the halfway mark on the pencil. I try to hold them towards the back, and oftentimes this is more comfortable for me because I can use my whole wrist or my whole arm, you know, in motion to put down a real nice delicate tone. If I tried to do that here, the angle changes and I end up drawing more lines and I'm heavier handed. So again, resting my, my uh, knuckles on the paper and tilting with my thumb, you know, it's kind of like that, and my wrist, you know, there's the motion. Um, it allows me to have a little more control over the weight of my line. So I hope that answered some of your questions about sharpening and you know, the best way to kind of hold your charcoal when you're starting your sketch. And um, if you guys have any other questions, just let me know how I can help you. And I look forward to seeing all of your drawings on Thursday. All right, see you soon. Bye.